Hey, welcome to another episode of the DVO Show. I'm here with Mr. Paul Welch. How's it going, y'all? Paul Welch is the founder of Paranormal Veracity. Now, that started off as a magazine, right? It started off as a magazine, yeah. And now it's more of a YouTube channel. It's it's media. So we're media, like, okay. We're like journalists. Got so it. So we're there to tell a story, whether it's based on location, investigators. Uh, we're there basically as journalists. We film other people as well. So Okay. So this is a, a paranormal media channel. Yep. And you have you're doing documentaries. You're showing evidence. Evidence will have like short episode length. Um, not really episode format, but they'll be of that length in in you know just basically a little show format. But okay, we won't be like going to episode one through eight. Type oh, of right. Okay. Like a TV show type of thing. Yeah. You're just just putting episodes out there, or just right. shows out there, like short yeah. short films. Nice, call them episodes. I like that. I like that. So you can look that up on YouTube. Just paranormal veracity. I'll spell it in the description of the podcast and YouTube channel. Yep. So you guys can can look that up. So I'm I'm very curious, Paul, because I actually don't know how you got into the paranormal field. Um. Well, I've always going back to a child. I've always been like fascinated with Bigfoot. Ghost, Loch Ness, okay. UFOs. I'd watch History Channel like all day long. Yeah. Just venture out on the couch. On those type of stuff? On those... Yeah. But how I started actually investigating, um, uh, started at a location I'll be at tonight. It's Island 49. That's where As I in, started. Island Twilla? Island Twilla. Okay. Um, a friend of mine won tickets from a radio show um, to go on this ghost hunt um, with the radio show. So they filled a bus full of people. Wow. Okay. And we went out there, and they basically split us into groups. Uh, Silent Forty Nine, you know, I don't know if you've been through their spiel, but they'll yeah. show, um, they'll show the evidence and stuff they've collected in okay. like, this room full of chairs. Uh, so we'd sit through that, and then they'd kind of take us on a tour of the building. Okay. And then the last few hours, they let us just roam free. All right. Did you? Did they let you borrow like equipment, or did you bring? They some? did. They did back <clears> then. They had equipment you could use. Um, but I really didn't use anything. I kind of wandered about alone. Okay. You know, we kind of got separated, and I just wandered alone without... I didn't even have a flashlight. And this was your first investigation ever? First time. Okay. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I didn't have a flashlight. Um, but I was just feeling the building, so I was just walking around in complete okay. darkness. Yet knowing where I was going. Uh-huh. And it was really weird. So I'd pop into rooms where there was experienced investigators going on, so I'd sit there and watch them for a while. I was like, wow, this is really fascinating. Okay. And uh, I remember the bus ride home that night. It's like, you know, I was just thinking, I was like, I need to do this more often. Awesome. You know, and at the time, that was the only place I knew I could do paranormal investigations. So I went to the very next one that they had. Okay. It might have been a year later, but this, yeah, this happened. My first one was like February 2011. All right. So that's that's kind of when I got the bug. All right. I want to do this, yeah. And now you're addicted to it. Now I live it. <laughs> Straight up live it. It's like 24-7. I can hardly go a day without sharing something paranormal somewhere. Okay. You know. Now I know some people get scared about the whole idea of going because they're scared. What if I bring something home with me and it haunts me? Do you ever have that fear too? Or bringing something home? Yeah. Um, you could do that going to every, you can, that could happen here at the coffee shop. Oh, that's true. You know, something could follow somebody in here and be like, I want to touch this guy and I'm going to follow him home. Right. So. Or if you buy something. You have to think, a lot of these locations we go to, already, they're open to the public. People are already working there. And they're going to and from every day. And, you know, we get some people that'll walk in there just because the lights are off. They're suddenly scared. I'm like, you got to remember, people working here, yeah, all the time, um, and they'll have experiences. So you just put that to the back of your head. Okay. Don't be afraid of it, because no matter what you really try doing, at the end of the night, you can't avoid possibly bringing something home. That makes sense. I mean, I agree with that. And too. it doesn't matter whether you're investigating or you're just there visiting. Okay. You could be a contractor going in and do some work and take something home. Right. So the investigation part, you're more prone to it. Okay. You're spending more time talking to them. 
Uh, but overall, yeah. you just can't avoid bringing it to them. I mean, that makes sense because you're, you are trying to interact with you're them. You're trying to interact. Collect evidence. And depending you... on what you use to interact, <clears throat> you could be opening a means of communication to them, and they might be attracted to that. Okay. Like, they might follow you because they're like, I can talk to this person. All right. Maybe not tomorrow, but eventually, <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to this person. And this kind of reminds me of uh, my very first time to the family tree, the rest, family tree restaurant. Um, I don't know if you ever heard the session we did there. No. Using Echo Box app, uh, first time in a haunted location I used this app, and a little girl named Beth came through. Oh, interesting. And we don't know where she came from, but she kept letting us know who she was. Like All right. Her name over and over in a little girl's voice. She'd call out the teddy bear that was on the table, like straight up said teddy bear. Wow. Knew what color the teddy bear was, all this stuff. Like she was responding question after question. So on this came. app, it was basically uh, skipping through many white noise channels and they kind of, you hear voices come through Well, the, the Echo Box, the way, it, the way it's built is there's four audio banks. Okay. You got two of them that have random audio noises Another third bank has like a female voice saying a bunch of words, you know, okay. all in the same monotone type of voice. Oh, okay. And then you have one of all male. Oh, interesting. Um, and it basically, it, it'll go in and grab the chunks of audio from all four banks at different speeds, whatever you said it to be, and it'll spit it out. And it'll come back through the microphone and get buffered and come back. And it goes in an instant loop and constantly new audio is added to it along with the mic is picking up what you're saying. Okay. And it getting kicked out too. So somehow the spirits can hijack the audio to either say what it wants or what we're hearing comes either under or over the audio. So we're hearing like EVPs coming through the microphone and then get kicked out. Now EVPs are electronic voice phenomena. Voice phenomena. So let, that's a good transition. Let's talk about that. I want to talk about the first time that we met. So we were actually at Family Tree. This was maybe a couple years ago. We were at Family Tree Restaurant. This is this is in Santa Quin, Utah. It's a well-known haunted restaurant. Yeah, it's a haunted restaurant. The, the, the history goes back uh, generations. And, and it's now a restaurant in Santa Quin. So they're known for having scones the size of <laughs> like two of my shoes. <laughs> and they're pretty damn good. And my brother and I were invited by a paranormal group, which we are uh, involved with now. It's called WISPs or Advanced Paranormal. And we were invited just to go to do an investigation. My brother and I have been investigating for a while on our own. Mm -hmm. And we were invited to go down and we met Paul. We, we it started off as a dinner. We had a dinner first and we just sat next to him. We were just kind of talking and getting to know each other. And he shared this Echo Vox app with my brother and they gave us a little bit of a history lesson. We all kind of we all kind of started in one room together. We all kind of branched out. So a little quick story because you don't know what happened with me and my brother. But then I want to get to your story mm -hmm. in a minute because it's pretty crazy. But me and my brother were kind of walking around and they said, you know, there's a few known spirits or entities there, and we put the our phone down, which had the Echo Vox app, and we're letting it kind of do its sweep, doing its thing, and we're asking questions to see if we get any response. And uh, we got some pretty crazy responses. So some questions we asked is, hey, do you know our names? And I'll be damned, it said my name. It said Derek, and I was like, wow, crazy. So, you know, I got goosebumps. And then I remember um, my brother asked, do you know my name? And, and no response, but then he said, do you know how we're related? And the response we heard come back through said, twins. Now, uh, you know, people that know us know that we are not twins, but we do look very similar since we're brothers. And man, that scared us. I mean, he, he, he was done. He was like, okay, I'm done. I wanted to keep going, but he was done. I said, all right, that's good enough. So we went back in the back room and- West Wing? Okay. Yeah, in the, red, in, the, in the dining area where, in the back dining area. And the Paul's there with a few other people. And the, you had the, I don't remember, the, the, the device that when there's movement, it goes off. What would, he has like a big light. Uh, it's, it's like a static meter. Yeah, so it, it, whenever there's like a movement, like a footprint, I guess, it'll, it'll set it off. 
And we were kind of doing that, just kind of observing. And then you went downstairs with a couple people. And we were just kind of upstairs, kind of, you know, asking questions, investigating. Next thing I know, I hear from downstairs, holy shit, and just going off the rails. So, Paul, tell us this story. This this story, I'll tell you what, I, to be honest, this this changed everything. Okay. It changed everything. Well, I'm glad I was able to be um, there to experience even that. Even though I investigated years prior to this incident, it, it really opened the door as to how scary this really is. Okay. Yeah, um, I was down there with Tim and Gary, you know, both yep. teammates of yours. Um, and we were talking about a book uh, that I just found out that day. It was There was something going on with the book. Don't touch it. Don't take it home. Cause this is down in the basement, this book. Down in the basement, yeah. yes. And uh, Gary's like, well, let me go get my cleansing kit. We're going to cleanse this book. Okay. And so me and Tim stay downstairs. And, and when he says that, he's talking, when he says cleanse the book, we're talking about like salt and salt, yeah, whatever he bay is, leaves yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Stuff to it. Uh, but I sit there and I watch Gary go up the stairs. And there's a little bit of light coming down. Okay, because the basement was pitch dark. It was pitch dark, except for the light that was coming down the staircase all the way at the end. Okay. So I watch him go up. And basically from the foot of the stairs where he just left from, comes this, what what I could describe is like a human spider, because it, it was about the size of a 10 year old child, like a okay. boy, Okay. as far as the body size. Okay. Completely bald, you know, like skeleton, didn't look like it ate at all, but it's hand, arms and legs were jointed like a spider and it crawled like wicked fast right towards me. What? And uh, yeah, it's like <laughs> it got halfway down the room, and you know me sitting there watching. They're like, I saw it in detail. Like I, I can sit there and probably draw this, this creature. Like what they have a head of? Like a little boy. Oh wow! Yeah, so, so it was just, like, just the joints were just crazy. Like yeah, a just the joints were like spiders. It's crawling on all fours. Which I, I have wow. a phobia of spiders already. <laughs> oh, wonderful! You know? And. I do remember screaming enough to where you guys heard me upstairs. Yeah, we heard you upstairs. Um, I do have it on audio too. We <laughs> but it wasn't like I'm scared scream. It's just like, you know, what, what was that? What did I just see? So I remember grabbing my flashlight and running right to the spot. And I'm like looking through the yeah. dog. And then everybody started coming downstairs like, what, what, what did you see? Yeah. And I've heard rumors of this thing in the basement, some shape shifting thing down okay. there. Okay. But I'd never thought I'd see it. You wow. Know? And this is the very first thing I've ever seen. Like, as far as apparition-wise. Yeah. That's it. That was the first one. Wow. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't want... And I had to drive home alone that night, you know, by myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For an hour, thinking about what I saw. And I was sitting there trying to process this. And I couldn't sleep that night. I couldn't sleep for days. Wow. Like, it tore me up. Like... Yeah. Okay, am I going to start seeing more stuff like that? What do you think it was? I think it was a shapeshifter just trying to scare me. Do you think because it knew you were afraid of spiders? I knew I was afraid of spiders, probably. Wow. But, you know, they have let other people into the building that have seen the same thing. Like if a little boy or like that, or that walking like a, like spider? a spider? Like a spider type gremlin looking thing down there. That's a good way to put it. I like that, a little gremlin. Yeah, I mean, I call it spider because what I saw, it it looked and crawled like like a really fast spider. Like I, wow. I wouldn't call it a gremlin, but it's a good word for it. Yeah, it's a good word for it. <laughs> but yeah, that was the only time I saw something that looked like it wasn't like completely human. Yeah. So when you say that changed everything, like you, you think there's like a lot of crazy stuff out. What what does that mean? You just think it changed crazy stuff everything as far as. What we're looking for is more than just grandma that's passed away. Got it. You know, 200 years ago. There are other things out there, you know, and we hear about these on these shows we watch, like Dead Files. You know, she talks about uh -huh. weird things coming from the ceiling. Um, but you just never register it. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll never see something like that. You probably don't think you'll ever see... Um, an apparition, like a full apparition. Right. But 
this this particular sighting happened after you know another crazy like experience I had just like a month prior. What was that? Um, it was at the Mackey Mansion in Virginia City. Okay, and that that's a really known hot spot for paranormal activity. Virginia City is like the hot. So it's door to door. You can invest any building and you're going to catch stuff. Wow. Because that, so many people made a lot of money, you know, as a mining town. Mining, gambling too, they did a lot of gambling. Um, right? There was so much money made in that town so fast and lost. Yeah. That this was a really big time in a lot of people's lives. Okay. That's why they stick around, you know, like, this was my heyday. I loved it here. Right, that makes sense. Um... But we went out there to film a movie called Shadows of Silver City. And that's on your YouTube channel? And it's on the YouTube okay. channel. It's the first movie we ever filmed. It was like, we're going to try this out. We're going to do okay. it. But we take a tour of the Mac Mansion before we go over to do the Washroom Club. I mean, it's just a $6 tour. But he basically took us to two main rooms. Okay. And then he let us wander. You know, so we go upstairs. You know, I'm filming just to get footage for the movie right and they start investigating you know okay but I pan into this room I think it was the bathroom and I start feeling like I'm having a heart attack wow like instantly like my chest pains were just full-blown sweat started pouring off my head I started yeah. getting dizzy like I couldn't see anymore wow and I just I don't say anything to nobody okay and I just leave I go all the way down to the very bottom floor and out the side door, and it instantly felt fine. And you know, a lot of people are like, well, you got scared and you left. I'm like, I got scared that I'd need to go to the hospital, so I went outside where there was other team members Yeah. that might need to take me to the hospital. Right. Maybe some fresh air too. Because um, I, I seriously thought I was in trouble. I, I was scared for my life. Wow. And I didn't really equate it to like a paranormal experience. Okay. Until I walked out of the building and I'm like, I feel fine. I just feel drained. I feel okay. fine. Like all the symptoms are gone, but I'm just that. Like I'm just. Wow. Okay. I need to rest for like two hours. Um, but you know we, you know, since that very experience, I've seen stuff. Okay. I've also had like premonitions of things that are about to happen. Oh yeah? Like an hour in advance. And they do happen? And it happens. Can you give some of the good examples? Um, good examples, you know, because I, I drive for a living. So I'll be out driving and I'll think like, oh, I hate to take a bunch of pizzas into that place. And my very next run and taking a bunch of pizzas into that place. <laughs> or I'll just think of some, like of, of a person, like, you know, I haven't heard from this person in like two months and suddenly an hour later they're calling me. You know what? That's funny. That happens all the time to me. I'll think of somebody like, I haven't ever seen this person for a long time, or I haven't talked to them in a long time. Next thing you know, I run into them at the store, or they call me, or something like that. Yeah, that, yeah that's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, it, it happens a lot when I'm driving, and it might be because I'm in a relaxed state or something. Yeah. Uh, but I've even had an instance where I had a dream of, uh, uh, of the Mackey. So there's two different dreams that were like significant for me. Okay. I had a dream I was going up to the up the stairs at the Mackey Mansion and I looked down the hallway and a little girl peeps out of the her room, the kitchen room, and she just does that. Like a shh a little like a sh motion. and she points down at the, the the mother's room at the very end of the hall. This is a dream. This is a dream okay. and then I woke up. Okay. But it just happens to uh, coincide with the next time we went and investigated the Mackey Mansion uh -huh. I catch a full sentence EVP of a lady like slapping someone and say stop it I'm trying to sleep Interesting. full sentence wow like you can hear the slap followed by the full sentence and we know who was in the building like who possibly said this yeah and like in that same stretch of investigation in the same room we later you know catch a little girl um, and she says, excuse me, like, like, clear as day. Wow. Little girl, that, 
It, it, it happened right after my friend Danielle, she kind of had her stomach growl. Okay. Like everybody hears it and we're all laughing. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was that quiet in the building. And then we're, as we're laughing, you just hear this little girl, excuse me. Whoa. And the lady who um, does the chores there, who looks after the building, she uh -huh. heard it. She goes, yeah, that's that's a little girl that, you know, haunts this location. Wow. And she was familiar with the voice. Are, your, are there any pieces of that on your YouTube channel too? It's on the YouTube channel. Oh, I'm going to listen to that one. Yeah, so those are two very clear, like, EVPs caught in the same, like, hour. And we thought it was a, a dead night. Like, oh, there's yeah. nothing happening, you know. Which, I mean, that happens, right? That happens sometimes. It happens, you know, but we didn't have like knockings and footsteps and anything okay. crazy. But those those two EVPs made it work the whole time. Like, oh wow. yeah, and it happened while we were just kind of just screwing around, you know. That's crazy. But yeah, since then I think I've seen four um, apparitions. Like full body apparitions? Full body. Like, I mean, well, you count the spider guy. <laughs> one. Okay. Uh, but since then, I've seen a military guy at the family tree. Like full, oh, wow. Where at? Full military dress in the West Room. Okay. So above the basement. Saw him. It was after about a half hour of a dowsing run session where I was talking to him. Okay. And he was telling me this story that somehow we figured out that he died with a friend at the same time. Oh. In the same explosion in a war that happened long time ago okay we couldn't figure out where this war was he said it wasn't out in that area in Santa Quinn. okay but he's been going around looking for his friend ever since he can't find him. so he, he wasn't hanging out at the restaurant he's just kind of passing by kept passing through he was there uh, from what I asked less than six months so he was oh. there less than six months passing through pretty much and he hasn't crossed over because he has to find his friend, make sure his friend's okay. Yeah. Can't find his friend. Wow. But like, I start tearing up, you know, I put the thousand rods down and I had tears coming out of my eyes. Yeah. This was a sad story we got out of this. And I look up and we have a table full of investigators and between two on the far side, he just stood there just looking at me and then by the time I broke my flashlight, he was gone. Wow. Yeah. What would be? When you first, you know, when you first saw this full body apparition, he's in his uniform, right? He's in his uniform. Were you scared or were you? How did you no, feel when you first saw it? I wasn't scared at all. I was comforted. Oh, okay. I I felt honored that he showed me himself. Wow. I did mean, he know I he saw was dead? I saw everything. I saw the tassels coming down from his hat. Okay. One one hat was like pinned up on the side. It had little tassels oh, okay. coming down. You could see the insignia, and he had he had some kind of ropes on hanging from here. And then he was gone. Like, wow. Yeah. Did he know he was dead? Yeah, he knew. He just was just looking he for He wouldn't his cross over. And I'm like, I was trying to tell him, like, maybe your friend has already crossed over. And you yeah. can't see him. Interesting. Let's talk about that for a second. Just your opinion. Are you, are you a religious person? No. Now, when you say cross over then, what does that mean to you? It just means you're going into the spirit world. So Okay. Before you cross over, you're kind of earthbound. You know, you can choose to be earthbound. Yeah. Or you can go kind of into the spirit world. Some people might call it heaven. I don't. I don't know if it's heaven. Okay. But it's some place where they can come to and from because they can okay. come here at any time. Go back. Interesting. But they say that, um, as far as my thoughts go, is there's no easy connection between the earth bound realm and the spirit realm yeah like you can't they can't see each other so if you've never crossed over you can't see the spirits that are in the spirit realm interesting that's pretty interesting because i come i come across a lot of um spirits that you know if i'm doing a dowsing rod session you know sometimes i get children they won't cross over they won't go into the light okay because they're looking for their parents sure but they, they passed long before their parents did. They wow. passed as children, so their parents were still alive. So when their parents crossed, you know, as adults, they crossed over, you know. Yeah. The child's still earthbound. Sure, yeah, just looking. Yeah, looking. It's kind of sad, though. I mean, think it about is it. very sad, and that's why I think that there's 
like a different plane of reality between being earthbound and spirit because they can't see each other. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing your opinion on that because I know some people, I don't know, they just get shy about it or don't want to get controversial about it. It's, I, it's I intriguing, you know, and we'll never have the answer. Yeah, I tell, tell, until, until it's our time, maybe, then, then we'll have the you answer. You know, I have so many questions, you know, like when you investigate a building like the Mackey Mansion, which is great for electronic voice phenomena. Okay. It's, it's really great for that. But why are we just getting a snippet? You know, we're recording yeah. four, five, six hours, and we capture a snippet yes. of what they're saying. Right. And sometimes it's very it, faint, too. Why is that only available during that short period of time? Yeah, I don't know. Is it just like some kind of, is it like a frequency where suddenly the frequency bleeds into our realm, and we hear a blip like a radio station when you're going through the yeah. panels? I have no idea. Interesting. It's an interesting little theory. But, you know, for whatever reason, we're not hearing them all the time. Yeah. It's just random. That's pretty interesting. Now, I know you have a lot of stories. I want another good, memorable story that you can think of. I know we've already talked about a couple good ones. Those are pretty good. <laughs> I'd, love to, I'd love to hear another one. I'm sure the listeners want to hear another one, too, <laughs> if you don't mind. Oh, you always want stories. <laughs> Uh, there's so many. Where, where do we go? Any particular location I should tell the story on? No, just something that just is memorable to you, besides what we've already talked about. Um, well, I've had seen, uh, I'll share a couple. Okay. Um, one we didn't, we didn't capture on film, we didn't really record it or anything. Uh, but we were in Eureka, um, Utah here. Okay. And we were just taking time out in the middle of the day because we spent the whole weekend like living in those buildings. Okay. Like that was our home base. So we had our couch, we had sleeping stuff. Oh, like, like literally we slept in, in the, the buildings. These are abandoned buildings. Right. Okay. So we slept in the diner, you know, and we were kind of on a break um, between filming B roll and, and doing interviews. And uh, my friend Danielle, she had her phone like in a, a pocket of a cot that she was sleeping okay. in. Okay. And it, it's been in there all day. She had no service. So it's been tucked in this little pocket that just hung from the cot from okay. the side. And we're sitting there like 15 feet away at a table and we hear this noise. Boom, boom. And we're looking around and suddenly we see her phone just sitting in the middle of the diner on the floor. Okay. Very like, how did it get out of the cot? The pocket of the cot. The pocket of the cot and onto, onto the, the floor. floor. Okay. We're both just sitting there baffled like. Yeah. What just happened? Interesting. And it wasn't the only poltergeist type thing where things were being either opened or moved. During our whole visit there, I mean, um, Zachary Stone went down there just to kind of film. He loves to film and record everything. Okay. So he's walking the building, he's filming, he goes down into the basement. I don't know if you've been in that basement with the White Owl. Not a, no, not in the basement. But there's a basement. He goes in there, he's kind of walking around. And he, he noticed this cabinet that has a picture of Elvis on it. Okay. So he's like, you know, kind of does a little Elvis impersonation. Okay. Like, How you doing, you know? <laughs> then he opens the cabinet, shuts it, and you can watch him latch it. He films this whole thing. He latches it. Then he goes walking about the basement. Then he comes back, and he's he, there's this long poem of the Tommyknockers poem okay. down there. And he kind of films. The, as he's walking to it, you hear... The cabinet unlatch. Wow. Like on the audio. But he's walking to it. He, he didn't hear it. Okay. You know, he just kept walking. He films this whole little poem. And then he turns and goes up the stairs and the cabinet comes popping out. And he catches it on camera. Wow. Like it pops out and he's like, oh my God. You know, I just <laughs> caught that on camera. And then he comes up running to where we are in the, in the diner and comes and tells us about it. Uh-huh. But, you know, I didn't know what he caught until I actually looked at the footage. It. Like, wow, this is a pretty cool one. That's crazy. Because you could hear, like, before he even gets to the stairs, the cabinet uh -huh. suddenly unlocks. And it's like, how did it unlatch itself? Wow. I mean, for it just to pop open, I'm like, okay, maybe 
the stairs made it pop open because it's all connected in a way. But you hear it unlatch, like before he even gets to the stairs, he's on concrete. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> or like, and then later that night, um, we go and we investigate these uh, like mine buildings up there. I don't know if you've been in the mine buildings. Uh, you no, I've just been in the town. Okay, so there's four mine buildings up there. Okay. Um, that you can go up and investigate. It's kind of, there's no sign to say no trespassing or anything. So we were in there investigating it and uh, we were there during the daytime when we were getting really cool uh, spirit box responses. Okay. And and the one that made us leave is uh, Zach was like, you want us to stay or you want us to leave? And you just hear this man come through, leave. Like really loud? Oh yeah, wow. loud and clear, you know, and we're like, whoa, you know. <laughs> and this was like 20 minutes after me seeing Zach walk behind the building, like I saw him. But then Crazy. I turned to my right and he's standing right there. It's like, dude, I just saw you outside. Wow. Like, I saw you. Not like a, not a person, but actually you saw, you I saw, thought you saw him. I saw him and it's like, I'm making it out to be him. You know, I thought, oh, he went behind to go to the bathroom. Wow. You know, which is, wouldn't be uncommon. You yeah. Know, he's been drinking a beer too, went to go use the bathroom. But we leave, you know, okay, we, like, he said leave, so we go. Uh -huh. But we come back later that night, you know, and, you know, we kind of talk about it, it's like, I'm sitting there talking to the camera and I'm like, you know, we were here earlier and they said to leave and so it's actually like, so what are we doing now? I said, we're going back. <laughs> and so we go back and we're all on edge. Like our heartbeats are just boop, 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 Yeah. Boop. Like there's a bat in the building for some reason. And we're just, we're freaking out, like for no reason. Like we're just on edge. You know, everything we hear is like, oh my God, what was that? Uh -huh. But um, we look up at the rafters and we see what, what was a snake okay like and we go to run but then we flash our lights up there and suddenly it's a rat interesting and we all saw a snake like you'll see it in the movie okay like you'll see like a snake all right and then suddenly it's something on all fours Whoa. like uh interesting what? yeah because we saw it with our own eyes we didn't need the cameras to see this thing okay so we knew what it was. I mean, even on the film, Zach goes to grab his microphone uh -huh. and take off. He goes, that's a snake. You know, he grabs his gear, he's going to start running. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really funny part of the movie, but it ends up being this weird rat thing. Interesting. And uh, so we, we're like, okay, we're going to keep investigating. So we turn on the echo box. We use that. It was the first time during the whole movie we used the echo box. And, uh, you know, we, we asked the question, it's like, you know, why do you want us to leave? Who's up here with us, uh -huh. you know, with us? And it says, us. Wow. Like, loud and clear, like. And so Zach Waters, he starts getting sick to where we have to, like, leave the building. But as soon as we start walking back to the car, he's like, I feel better. I feel so much better. Interesting. But he wow. had, yeah, it, it tore him up. That's crazy. So, I mean, why, why do you... Why are, you, why are you so passionate? Why do you still investigate? Are you seeking answers? Are you just want to collect evidence? What's going through your mind? Um, it's more about answers. It's more about the communication. So, um, and I don't know if you've ever got to the point where you're so wrapped up in communicating with spirit. Uh -huh. so it, it, it like, it does something to you. Like, this is what it's all about. Yes, I am. You're yes. deep in conversation with yeah. something from the other side. You're getting name, age, You're trying to story. get answers. You're trying to get their story. You're like, you might be helping this person by allowing yes. them to talk to you. Yes. And that's what it's all about. I love getting the evidence. I love showing other people that there's something else there. There's some truth to it. It's not a game for me. It's not... You know, I want to be popular. It's never been about that. You're just looking for answers. Yeah, I mean, because I've had one foot in the grave for years. Okay. But you know, ever, issues. ever since I was yeah diagnosed with some health issues, I was like, I want to know like what happens to me. Yes. 
It's like, do I cease to exist? Right. That's the scariest part of death to me. It's like, is there nothing else? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. So, you know, I don't know that answer, you know, to be honest. It's like, yeah, we're, we're catching... We're catching EVPs, you know, voices. Yeah. We're seeing things. We're having interactions. We're having stuff move. But at the same time, it's like it's it's like the whole frequency thing. It's like, are we just getting a little frequency blend? Yeah. Of some kind of other realm, some kind of past, you know, replay. Right. I don't know. And and that's why I investigate. I'm, I. I'm curious, what happens? Exactly what you're saying, what happens when we die? What happens to us? Where do we go? Do we just cease? Or do we go to another, like you were maybe saying, dimension, a heaven, something like that. But I'm also curious, why, why if there are ghosts, why are they still here? You know, so I have a lot of questions too, and that's why I do it, because I'm just well, so curious. I could tell you from some experiences why we're here, for, for some. Yeah. Um, I've connected with um, soil doves. So let's say soil doves, prostitutes. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard that game. Okay. Soil doves, what they used to be referred to a long ago. I never even knew that. <laughs> before the name prostitute came around. I just called ladies of the night. <laughs> ladies of the night. But I've, I've connected to some that are on the, you know, that have passed on. And they will not cross over because they're afraid of judgment. Okay. Stuff they did. Makes sense. You know, for what they did for work, they've also gave up children for their job. Okay. So they've had abortions or gave away children, however they got rid of children. Yeah, interesting. And so they're afraid, you know, because a lot of people were very religious, especially way back then. Yeah. Know, more religious than now. We question things more now than we did back then. Right. Because of technology, because of science, um, because of the way we learn things on YouTube. Right, <laughs> but back then it's like it was all about faith. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and even though they did evil deeds, uh, nobody realized what's happened until you die, and then you're like, okay, if I go into the light, will I be judged and sent somewhere else? Yeah, fiery pit of hell. You know, <laughs> and you know you can kind of understand that with a prostitute because prostitutes were considered to be. Low life, you know. Right, like, evil. Or... I wouldn't say evil, but they're they're doing sin. Yeah. Okay. Day. Yeah. They were sinners, according to the church. Yeah. And even the men that use prostitutes kind of looked down on them, like. Sure. They're not equal. Yeah. So. You know that's just uh, it's just crazy to think that, you know, people did something in their life and it forever haunts them. Yeah. And I can tell you from a near death experience myself that you question your life. Well, no, I can't say question your life. But you think about all the things that you have not resolved. Okay. With others. All right. All these things, all these things you know, friendships, <clears throat> family, you know, yeah. you're like, I'm out of time. Okay. I can't fix this. Interesting. You know, I, I screwed up and I'm out of time. I can't wow. undo these things that I did. Yeah. I can't seek forgiveness because at that point when you're about to die, you're like, you've forgiven everybody else. Yeah. But they don't know that. Cause right. And maybe they haven't forgiven you yet. Yeah. So you want to you want to fix all these things. You don't want to go to the other side with this thought of people still hating you. Sure. And getting bad about you. Makes sense. And so it kind of, it's like a personal haunting. Wow. And that's what I felt like when I was like, to that point where I almost died, you know, I was like, this is what I thought about. Wow. It's like I ran out of time to fix all this stuff. So when you came out of it, did you go out and... Uh, when I came out of it, I became a different person. Nice, good. So some people say, you know, you don't have no backbone, you're too nice. There's a reason for that. I used to be a real piece of work like, <laughs> I didn't get the name nickname outlaw in the military before because I was nice you know I, right. just, I just didn't care <laughs> you know, I was a badass you know just 
But yeah, it's like when when I experienced that, it's like you gotta live a little bit differently. That's true. That makes sense. You know, you gotta be good to the people that are that are around you, even if they're not good to you. I like that, man. Be the better person. I like that. I like that some people are like, You're too nice, like or you got no backbone, you're afraid to tell people off. I'm like, I'm not afraid. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, is it worth it? That that's a good point. So, uh, Paranormal Veracity, what upcoming projects do you or the team have coming up that we should know about? So, um, the most recent thing coming up is we went to Schofield, Utah, uh, the site of the biggest Utah mining disaster in history. Okay. Um, they lost 200 plus people within minutes. Oh, wow. Was it a cave-in then? Um, a coal mining explosion. Oh, wow. So... This happened in Winter's Quarters, which is now off limits. Okay. But the nearby um, city, Schofield, is where some of them lived, and some of the, a lot of the bodies are buried in Schofield. Okay. They also used buildings in Schofield as temporary morgues. Oh. Until the bodies could be moved to okay. else. And a lot of the existing, still standing buildings got moved to Schofield as well. Interesting. Now, Schofield is about. 24 people that live out there. Okay. Uh, Th we, that's the whole population? That's the whole population. Wow, okay. So, yeah, and they, they don't really like people. I can see that. Like, when right. we were out there, it's like they just kind of just, they didn't want to talk to us. Oh, so you, you're you you're doing like a documentary and you're trying to talk to, interview the town We're trying people. to talk to people and they just, they don't want nothing to do with you. Oh, wow, okay. As soon as they find out you're filming, like, what are you filming for? Uh, we don't want people to know about this place. Okay. Um, but there's a school in Schofield. You know, it's a two-story school. It used to be three stories. Okay. But as you're driving into town, this thing looms over the whole town. Like, it's this big, empty building. Wow. Um, supposedly, bodies were kept in the building after the explosion. In fact, when you go in there, there's all these, like, they kind of use it as, a, like, a midship museum. Okay. So they're showing pictures of just bodies laying on the floor, saying, you know, here at the Schofield School. There's only one school in town. So. <laughs> yeah, I would say for that population. The weird thing <laughs> is the, the explosion happened in 1900. Okay. The school didn't come until years later. Oh, all right. So we're trying to figure out, like, okay, how do we have pictures of bodies laying in the school if the school wasn't there? Oh. But the school might have been moved from Winter's Quarters okay. to Schofield. Got it. You know, yeah. anticipating the city would rebuild and come back, but they never did. Okay. They wanted to die. I gotcha. <laughs> All right. But that's our very next project. We already filmed most of it. Uh, we got to go back out there and do another, you know, a couple hours of filming. Okay. Um, what do you think of the project then? Huh? When do you think you'll have it done? Oh, I, I don't even give time frames. All that. right, just when you have the time I, to go out I there. I work so much. Yeah. Wrap it up. Well, right now they they had fires out there. Oh. They evacuated the whole town. Got it. So we can't get in there because the mayor has to let us into the building. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's not one of those where you call someone who just works in the building. And yeah. The mayor has to let you in. So. Got and it. he's kind of you know. Why do you guys want to be out here? Um, he's not. He's not very friendly. All right. The town isn't friendly. I mean, we we tried to go out to Winter's Quarters with a tour with a historian. Okay. And the property owners found out we'd be filming. It shut us down. Oh, wow. Big time. They're like, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, we won't take your cameras. Like, no. Still can't go out there. Jeez. We don't want you guys on our property. Yeah. I can. Um, all right. But you have to let a whole bunch of other people up there. Hmm. Like the rest of the tour can go up there, but you guys can't go up there. <laughs> but all your other projects, they're on your YouTube channel. We also have, and after that one, we'll be doing the Jackson House Hotel in Eureka, Nevada. Okay. Um, that'll be the one after that. Um, and that's the only other like upcoming projects we have. Cool. And, you know, personally, I'll be out in... Uh, Columbia, California, mid September. Okay. To investigate gate buildings. Oh wow. Yeah, it's it's 
pretty cool. And uh, how over what kind of a span time frame? Overnight. Eight buildings? That said. Yeah. Oh wow. They are they they're side by side then. I'm guessing it's You're kind hoping. of another mining <laughs> town. Yeah, I right. haven't been there. Um, and then in November I'll be doing Preston Castle in California. Cool. Yeah, that one I'm really excited for. Awesome, man. Yeah. That's good. So you got some good projects coming up. So your YouTube channel is going to get pretty full. A lot of other stuff coming up then. <laughs> I just need more time, you know? It's like, yeah. Where do I find the time? I like have to work to pay bills. And then when I get home, I'm just too tired to go through hours of stuff. Yeah, well, it's true because, I mean, these investigations, they cost money, right? You're traveling to Nevada, California, equipment. I mean, I know, I've seen your equipment case. you got a lot of gadgets I, and stuff in there. That and I've, I've kind of scaled money. back. I used to, I don't know if you remember, but I used to do a couple of investigations a week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. But, yeah, now it's like I'm doing bigger investigations. Right. You know, bigger locations. Um, I'll be at Asylum 49 again tonight. Okay. Which will be a lot of fun because that, that's where I got my start. Yeah. My very first two investigations were in that building. And, you know, the weird thing, and Asylum's not the only place I've felt this way, but I'll walk into buildings like the Washer Club. And even though I haven't been there before, I know my way around. That's pretty interesting. And I don't know why. Do you think maybe you had like some dreams or premonitions that subconsciously is in the back yeah, of your mind? I could be having attachments like steering me. Oh, that's a good attachment. Show me the way. Interesting. You know, I. Some people think I have this weird connection with the afterlife. Okay. And it may be true because, you know, people will invite me to their adventures because stuff always happens when you're here. You know? <laughs> And I don't know, you know, some, some people call it being a back magnet, and you want to call it that, but stuff does happen, you know, around me a lot. Interesting. And it has long before I even became a paranormal investigator, I've had experiences. Wow. I mean, the most, the craziest one, I've actually tried writing a book about it. Um, well, like my whole, you know, time everything that came prior, but the craziest one, uh, this this happened actually before I ever investigated. Okay. And we were in an apartment and we had this bathroom that has one of those really long um, countertops. Okay. And one day, this was after, not shortly after my father passed away, um, but I walk in there and like, as soon as I get through the threshold of, of the bathroom door, you know those uh, bed and bath, like pump soaps, like through square oh, yeah. on the bottom and yeah. getting narrow to the top. Well, this thing is like half full. It tips over and flies all the way across the counter by wow. itself, like all the way into the toilet. What? Yeah, this thing was like forced. Like, you know, right as I come in and I hit the switch, turn on the light, I just, you know, like I'm just standing at the door, like, what just happened? <laughs> You know, so I, I grab it out of the toilet and I put it back on the counter. And I kind of tried just nudging it with the finger. Uh -huh. and it just slides a little bit. It doesn't tip over. So you have to like... Put some force. You know, slap it and send it down down the counter. Wow. And, you know, and I, I was telling my ex, you know, she was, we were married at the time. She goes, stuff like, weird stuff like that happens all the time. Like... Yeah, because she'd call me. I'd be yeah. at work. You know, I used to have a restaurant that was 24 hours. Uh -huh. I'd be at work, all kinds of weird hours. She'd call me, you need to come home. This just moved, you know. Like, yeah. Like, I can't come home right now. You better <laughs> call a friend. But we were having these weird things happen. Uh -huh. And even things would happen at my workplace. Like, you know, when I'm up there alone at 2 o'clock in the morning, things would suddenly fall or move. Wow. And I never really thought about it. You know, when you're not an investigator, yeah, you you're think, like, okay, uh, maybe it was about to fall. Yeah, right. Yeah. So there's got to be a reason for it. But once you once you cross that threshold, you start investigating. So you start understanding these little things that happen around you. Very interesting. To where it's like, okay, something's trying to get my attention. Yeah. Because the very day after my, my father passed away, we had we had one of those motion detectors in our house. Okay. And we had an alarm system. 
we've had it for a month. The motion detector never went off. It was just in one room. Okay. That stayed shut. You know, for all of our movies, computers, all that stuff. Okay. Like an office. The most expensive part of the house. Okay. <laughs> and uh, very next morning, we, I'm at work and she's at work. And we get a call from the, the alarm company that like, your motion detector's gone off. We're sending cops over there right now. Okay. So we find a way to get out of work, go down there, and we meet the cops right outside. And we do a walk around the building. There's nothing wrong. We go inside. Everything's still locked up. This room is still closed. And uh, cops are like, oh, it must be just false alarm. And I said, well, my father passed away yesterday, and he just gave me this look like, are you serious? Wow. <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, we're leaving tomorrow morning to go to California to deal with his passing. Yeah. You know, it's like, but we had to get stuff situated. We both worked that day. So it's just weird that that's the only time it's ever gone off. That is very weird. Yeah. It has to be the next day after. But again, it was back before I really yeah did this whole paranormal thing. You start making you think about things in the past, and I'm like, maybe that was. So when I yeah. sat down to start writing this book that I'm like five chapters into, it's like I'm remembering all of these little yeah, things right. that came before it. I'm like maybe I was meant to be a paranormal investigator. Interesting. Maybe that call from a friend to go to the asylum that night yeah. was was in the works long before I was aware of it. Makes you, it makes you wonder. Now, if someone wanted to go on an investigation and they're like, you know, I want, I want to try to get some evidence. I'm, you know, they found something on online where they can go in a group. What would you recommend is a good maybe tool without having to go spend a lot of money to go tr to use? Um, if, if you have $50, get a voice recorder. Okay. Um, if you, the nice to get a new one. Let's say you go to Walmart, you get an Olympus voice recorder that yeah. plugs into your computer. Um, that's probably, that's where I got my start. Okay. Um, but you could also find them on eBay, Amazon for 20 bucks. Yeah. People selling, you know, older voice recorders. I have like four. Oh, wow. Okay. At least four, you know? Yeah. I have one that's 200 plus dollars and I have one that's $20. Is there a big difference? There's, a, well, yeah, there's a big difference in quality. Yeah. Okay. The one that's two hundred something dollars, you can hear a pin drop from across the building. Ah, okay. You just wear headphones, like, oh, I heard that. I <laughs> and I, and I was always, you know, on our first investigations, we actually just used our smartphones because you smartphones? have smartphones. You have the voice recorder, you have a camera, um, video recorder, and also um, flashlight. You know, so. I remember just getting started, we would just use our, our smartphones. And there's some apps you can download. I don't know if I pull out a weight to those, but. Yeah, it, it, unless, unless an actually experienced investigator say, hey, use this app. Yeah. Don't waste your money on is what you're saying. But yeah, I mean, if you're getting started, a voice recorder. Okay, and perfect. a flashlight. You really don't need much. I mean, there's so much gear that I've invested in that it just, it, <laughs> <laughs> you don't use it enough to... It, it's garbage. <laughs> it's, it's literally just garbage. Okay. Because you're like, oh, it lights up. That's cool. But... Uh, what does that mean? There's there's really nothing more solid than a voice that shouldn't be there. Yeah. I, okay, I agree with that. You know, when I was... You know, one of my best EVPs locally came from Eureka, Utah. In a bank. And, uh, in the bank. In the bank. I left a voice recorder running all day long. I Where? Think, um, up, up in the like in the middle. Okay. Middle of the bank, so it's still kind of in the front, but before you go to the back. Okay. Like by the tellers. Yeah. Okay. So I left a voice recorder running there because I had different investigators going in there for an hour by themselves. Yeah. And I had Jessica go in there for forty minutes. She was by herself, just you know, and I recorded this whole thing. And. She leaves the building. Okay. And now the building is completely empty. She All walks right. down to the diner where the rest of us are at. Okay. And suddenly you hear this, you know, stuff being moved around and you hear this little boy come through and say, Mom! Whoa. And the first you time I heard it, place. yeah, I did that. <laughs> I did that. And I can play it for you later, but I did that. Uh-huh. Because um, it's so clear. And it what, it what it told me was, okay, she made a connection to this boy. Yeah in this bank 
And he's kind of doing that bit where, you know, your little child, you go to leave, you leave the child at home, you know, with the babysitter, and they're screaming at the door, Mom, yeah. you know. That's wow. what it seemed like to me, because it was like right after she left, and it's 1.30 in the morning in a dead town. Yeah. I mean, and it's, I mean, the people live there, but it is dead when it gets Well, I'm not going to catch a really clear voice of a, of a really young child. At one, yeah, one, two in the morning. When... All the buildings next to it are all empty. Yeah. And there's no houses nearby. Right. So I couldn't explain it. That's crazy. And that bank is pretty freaky. I've been down in the basement in the vault. And it's just, it gets really dark and little, it's a little creepy down there. The bank, yeah, that, as far as the bank, that is like the most compelling evidence I've ever, and, and it coincides with other investigators I've heard over time talking uh -huh. about there's a little boy in the bank. Okay. I've heard this story. Like right. Other investigators have come through and said, there's a little boy in the back of the bank. Wow. But not only do you hear his voice, but you hear stuff being moved around. Like he's throwing the damn fit on audio. Like, what is going on? Wow. <laughs> and That's good. I've, cop I've captured another little child voice in the Gatley building as well. Okay. So I don't, I don't know what children have to do with those buildings why they're there that's a good point yeah um maybe it's not the buildings at all maybe it's the land okay very haunted town though yeah it's pretty freaky well paul i appreciate you coming on today and and kind of sharing your stories and and i'm really excited i, we, I just subscribed to your paranormal paranormal veracity channel i was i was actually on your channel subscribe and i got this channel so i'm going to be watching a lot of content there i'm excited about so I can't wait for our next investigation together, my brother. Yeah, we'll have to make it soon. Yeah, we will. Hey, thanks guys for watching today. Thanks. Hope you guys get a little curious about the whole paranormal world. Have a good one.